Good morning or good afternoon to the people that are with us. So now I think you are going to see my uh, my screen. Okay. So we are going to speak about uh, the electromagnetic plunger, which is uh, which is an electrical appliance, a simple electrical appliance. So the presentation will be based on three parts. First, a, few, um, a small talk about uh, DC magnetic plungers and their specs. Then, a few things about designing a plunger, an electromagnetic plunger. And then, at the end, we will see a few tests that can be easy to be made, to be made with QuickField. So, uh, concerning the electromagnetic plunger, we will see a different paragraph, a different type, the four stroke characteristics, the timing characteristics, the environment conditions, and we will start to use QuickField on a simple design. So, as you can see, um, the electromagnetic plunger is a simple appliance which is um, uh, supplied with a DC source. Uh, today, we are speaking about DC electromagnetic plunger. We will, maybe we'll see another uh, time in the day uh, about uh, the IC electromagnetic plunger. So, uh, we have different type of electromagnetic plunger. Uh, the most simple is the open plunger. As you can see, you don't have any uh, magnetic uh, parts that close the magnetic flux here. They are very simple, but unfortunately, the force is very low. Then we have uh, another um, architecture which I call the semi-open architecture because uh, the magnetic flux is half, uh, you have a half path for it around the bobbin. Then uh, the last one, the most known of these uh, appliances is a closed type. Uh, the magnetic flux is simply closed, totally closed from uh, the external uh, surrounding. So inside we have the bobbin, which you can see here. In red we have the plunger. Uh, the plunger is generally attached to a load that you have to push or to pull. Here today we have about the pull uh, plunger. But if you want to have a push uh, option, it's easy. You have to add uh, a rod at the end, that's all. And then we have the body. And I think it's more about that in blue. Uh, yes, in blue, we have uh, the bobbin, which supports a coil. Now, with a few photographs, it will be better, a few pictures. OK? So uh, these are the practical industrial appliance. You have the safe frame, the safe frame because uh, the bobbin is supported by a, a safe frame in form of a uh, bath. Okay. Then the second one is a day frame. Uh, we can see that it's already it's not like a closed magnetic part around the bobbin. And the last one is a tubular plunger solenoid, which in fact is exactly uh, the bobbin you can see here, but which is enclosed in a cylindrical magnetic uh, body. Okay, so now we are going to see the most important characteristics of the plunger. I just a moment, we'll look for the clock. So, um, it is the most important uh, characteristic because it's uh, this that allow us to define which kind of load we can push or pull with using such plungers, such appliances. So, um, today, or I mean the, the model that were made for this uh, webinar, it's concerning the two of them here the open architecture and the closed architecture. This one is different, maybe to see another time. 
Uh, so according to the design of the plunger, the electromagnetic plunger, the force can be totally different. You can see that in the open architecture, but you can see it because it's almost symmetrical, symmetric. Um, the, 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 pu the, the pulling force is nearly constant, but in the contrary, for the closed architecture, the pulling force is very high at the end of the stroke. That's why, uh, according to the load you have, you have to choose which kind of appliance to design. For instance, if the load is constant, resistance force, because um, the higher the difference here, uh, the quicker will be the movement. And of course, uh, an important thing is it's the length of the stroke. But most often, the stroke is a, a few millimeters. Here, uh, you can see on the picture, uh, a very small um, electromagnetic plunger. They are about uh, two or three centimeter, centimeter and the, the, the stroke is about one centimeter. Now, uh, the second important characteristic is the timing characteristics. But as uh, it's written here in red, uh, we will see it another time because it's a more complicated uh, item to, to, to comment. But we can say today that the timing characteristic is divided in three parts. The first only depends on the resistance and inductance value of the coil. Uh, it's called, and most of the time, we call it uh, the inrush current because it's a starting current that uh, allows the, um, the load to be moved by the plunger. At this time, uh, you can easily use quickly to calculate the resistance and inductance value of the coil. Then, in the second part, when uh, the force of the plunger is superior to the, the resistance force of the load, uh, there is a movement. And it's quite a complicated movement because we have the mass of the plunger and the load that are moving, but also the inductance, inductance change. And then at the end of the stroke, when the plunger doesn't move anymore, we are, on, we are again on an electrical characteristic, but uh, in this, the inductance has changed. The resistance stays the same, but the uh, inductor is different. 